I've met a lot of strange people in my travels away from San Francisco. Little did I realize that right here in my own hotel, I would meet the most unusual of them all. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Paladin, Uh, it is you hiding behind that newspaper. Why, (laughs) Bell, Bell, Whit... Oh, I thought I might be lucky enough to run into you. What brings you into the Carlton? Well, now that I've seen you, it doesn't seem to matter. Where have you been for the last 900 years? Oh, in and out of town, you know how it is. Traveling and gunning? Well, more traveling than gunning. Oh, you poor boy. But you are in town some of the time. I have proof of it now. And you don't have to stay away from me like I have the measles or something. <laughs> well, I haven't forgotten you, Belle. <laughs> My latch string is always out to you, Paladin, and don't you forget it. I won't. Oh, it's been wonderful seeing you, but I do have to rush. I've got an appointment with that doctor from Vienna I've heard so much about. You're here at the hotel? Yes. You mean you haven't heard? No. Well, his name is Dr. Dreckel, and he has a parlor here in the hotel. friend of mine told me about him. Oh, she says he's wonderful. Uh, feels the bumps on your head or something and tells you all about yourself. He's the rage, and I was lucky enough to get an appointment. I'm just dying to meet him. You know, I'm surprised you haven't heard of him. Well, you know, in and out of town, I can't keep up with everything. Ah, you poor boy. Well, ta-ta. Ta-ta. Oh, uh, Mr. Paladin. Oh, hello, hey boy. Who was that lady in fancy clothes you talked to? Ah, that hey boy was the Belle Whitney. Fifteen years ago, the toast of San Francisco. Today, our wealthiest unmarried lady. Hmm. The wealthy rich women are always attracted to you. No, I hadn't noticed. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, even now, another wealthy rich woman would like for you to come to her room. Very important. Who? A uh, lady on third floor, Mrs. Uh, Flacker. Mrs. Flacker? The millionaire widow? Even so. Wants me to come to her room? That's what you tell Missy Wong to tell me to tell you. Well, you tell Miss Wong to tell Mrs. Flacker that uh, I'll be there. <laughs> Constipation is something people don't talk much about, but it can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Now, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, close to natural acting, a medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Well, pleasant-tasting chocolated X-lax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. X-lax is so gentle, so close to natural acting, there's no upset. That's why many doctors and millions of people use X-lax with complete confidence. X-lax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently, overnight. A chimney sweep summoned to the throne of Victoria could have suffered no more qualms than I as I trudged up the stairs to Mrs. Flacker's rooms on the third floor. Widow of Simeon Flacker, the railroad magnate and once the social arbiter of San Francisco, she now lived quietly, albeit imperially, at the Carlton. Why she wished to see me, I could not imagine. Certainly not to hire my gun. Mr. Paladin, Miss Wong says your business is helping people. Miss Wong is very kind. Well, I need your help. Oh, in what way? I want you to find out where I spent the night last night. Well, don't you know? No. I went to bed shortly before 11, and I rose at my usual hour this morning. 
I don't remember a thing during that time, but I didn't spend the whole night in my bed. What makes you think that, Mrs. Flacker? This morning I found sand in a pair of my shoes. The edge of one of my skirts and my petticoats were damp and sandy, as though I'd been walking along the beach. Yet I have no memory of leaving this room. Sounds like sleepwalking. Nonsense. If I were a somnambulist, I would have known it by now. Yes, I suppose so. Uh, Did you notice anything else unusual about your room when you awoke this morning? No, everything was in its place, undisturbed. Why do you ask? I was just wondering, if you did leave the room, if someone came in while you were gone? You mean to rob me? Possibly. Do you keep any valuables here? Just my jewels. Where? In a case. I, uh, I hide it between the mattress and the spring. I'll show you. It's under here. Why, it's gone. It was there last night before I retired. Well, there's your answer, Mrs. Flacker. I've been robbed. That's right. Oh, my dear. Did you leave your room today at any time? No, I've been right here. Mm-hmm. And it happened last night while you were apparently out of the room. But why don't I remember leaving? Well, I don't know, Mrs. Flacker. But since the thief couldn't very well lift the jewel case from under your mattress without waking you, he managed somehow to get you out of the room. But who would do such a thing? Well, whoever it was knew exactly where the jewels were hidden. Uh, this is a confidence you don't divulge to too many people, I presume. To no one. Yet the thief went directly to the hiding place. You said nothing else in the room was disturbed. There wasn't a sign of a search. Mm. Well, you must have told someone. Mr. Paladin, I am not likely to tell anyone where I hide a hundred thousand dollars worth of jewelry. A hundred thousand? Well, you better call the police. That's exactly what I do not want to do. Yes. This matter must be confidential. (laughs) That's why I sent for you in the first place. But, Mrs. Flacker, a hundred thousand dollars. It isn't the money. Don't you see? I can't let this get out. I'd be the laughing stock of San Francisco if this story got out. Nellie Flacker's taken leave of her senses, they'd say. Goes out on the town in the middle of the night, but she doesn't know where or with whom. Oh, no, Mr. Paladin. He who steals my purse steals trash. But he who steals my good name... Well, who might wish to do that? I tell you, Mr. Paladin, I haven't the slightest idea. Well, Mrs. Flacker, have you met any strangers lately? No. Done anything unusual during the past couple of weeks? No. Just the usual round of lunches, teas, and so on with my friends. Ah. Here, my engagement book is right over here. See for yourself. Uh, Dinner with the walkers. Mm. Theater party with the singers. Oh, Appointment with Dr. Dreckel. What's that? What's that? I, I don't know any Dr. Dreckel. Well, it says here you had an appointment with him yesterday at 2 o'clock. <laughs> That's absurd. Here it is. See for yourself. What? It looks like my handwriting. But I didn't write that. Somebody's playing tricks on me. Who's Dr. Dreckel? I never heard of him. I have. He's a phrenologist. Works out of a parlor here in the hotel. A phrenologist? You mean one of those quacks who reads the bumps on your head? Why why would I go to see him? I don't know, Mrs. Flacker. Why would you? Well, I didn't. I've never known a Dr. Dreckel in my whole life. There was no mistaking the sincerity in Mrs. Flacker's denial. So I took my leave of the good lady, promising her that I would do everything I could to recover the stolen jewels. After contemplating the mystery, I proceeded to investigate from another angle. Miss Wong, Hayboy, and I had a council meeting in my room. Oh, no, Mr. Palida. Mrs. Flacker not seem too strange last night. Except she told Missy Wong she not need me, so I go. Most always I help her get ready for bed, but... Last night, she told me to leave early. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, how about you, hey boy? You worked last night, didn't you? Oh, yes, sir. All night at lobby desk. But did you happen to see Mrs. Flacker at any time during the night? Oh, yes, sir. Oh, you did? When? Oh, uh, maybe around midnight. Hey, she come downstairs, goes through lobby. Hey, boy, say, good evening, Mrs. 
Flaka, uh, Mrs. Flaka say, uh, uh, good evening, hey boy. Uh, did she act funny, hey boy? Funny? Oh, no. Mrs. Flaka, very serious lady, Miss Apollo. Uh, no, I mean, did she act strange or unusual, like she could be walking in her sleep? Oh, no, just like always, wide awake. Did someone meet her? No, sir, she go out door all alone. Did you see her come back? Yes, sir. Oh, what time was that? Oh, maybe three o'clock. Did she come back alone? All alone. I say, have a good walk, Mrs. Flacker. And she say, yes, thank you, hey boy. Uh, did she act strange then? No, sir. All the same as before. Mr. Falladon, you sound like Dr. Fala. What mm. doctor, Miss Wong? The doctor from Vienna. He feels bumps on head. What about him? Well, he asked Missy Wong about Mrs. Flacker like you asked hey boy. He did? He did. When? Well, what kind of questions? Oh, last week, maybe. He asked if she is married lady, if she lived by herself, that kind of question. And what did you tell him? Oh, I tell the truth. I tell her Mrs. Flack, a plenty wealthy rich woman, live all by herself. Well, now, Miss Wong, why would you tell him that she's wealthy? You must always tell the truth, Mr. Paladin. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, you teach us, Mr. Paladin. Uh, be honest, policy is best. I... D oh, uh, Oh, well. Smoking more now, but enjoying it less. Have a real cigarette. Have a camel. So good. Have a camel cigarette. So rich. So mild. Have a camel cigarette. And here's the reason why. Best tobacco makes the best smoke. Have a camel cigarette. Mm, you can say that again. Best tobacco makes the best smoke. Have a camel cigarette. If you're smoking more these days, but enjoying it less, then change to Camel's, the best tasting cigarette of all. Have a Camel! Start to really enjoy smoking again. Although Mrs. Flacker claimed ignorance of the doctor from Vienna, it appeared that the doctor had learned plenty about her, and I wanted to know why. The next day I presented myself at his quarters and was met by the doctor himself. A short, bearded man in a Prince Albert coat, his pince nez secured by a wide black ribbon. You wish to see the doctor? Uh, yes, are you he? I am he. Uh, my name is Paladin, doctor. I live here in the hotel. Yes, what can I do for you? Well, I would like to inquire about one of your patients. I do not discuss my patients. Oh, no, I'm not asking you to violate whatever ethical principles you may have. It's just that uh, Mrs. Flacker's behavior... Mrs. Flacker? I do not know Mrs. Flacker. Uh, but her engagement book shows that she had an appointment with you the day before yesterday. She is mistaken. I have never had the pleasure of the lady's acquaintance. Oh, I see. This is what you have come to discuss, the hallucination of an old woman? Uh, well... Then you must excuse me, I'm expecting a patient. Uh, yes, of course. <sighs> Thank you, doctor. Not at all, Mr. Paladin. Good day. Thank you. Paladin, how oh. wonderful. Imagine seeing you again today. Belle, hello. You look like you're in a daze. You've been in to see Dr. Dreckel, haven't you? Yes, I have. Oh, isn't he marvelous? You know, that's how I felt yesterday after I'd seen him. I came out floating on air. I bet you did. Oh, I could hardly wait for my appointment today. Doesn't he have the most penetrating eyes? Yes, as a matter of fact, he does. Hypnotic eyes. Yes, that's it. Well, well, I mustn't keep the doctor waiting. Do come and see me soon like a good boy, Paladin. I will. Ta-ta. Ta-ta. Hmm. You come out floating on air. Hypnotic eyes. Oh, Mr. Paladin. Hey, you be the sea doctor? 
No. Well, that is only for a minute. Hey, boy, listen. Uh, yes, sir. Is there a back way into that parlor where the doctor treats his patients? Uh, maybe so. I think there is service entrance. Can you lead me to it? Yes, sir. Uh, we have to go through the back halls. Good. Let's go. I think this is a door, Monsieur Paladin. Okay. Now be very quiet, hey, boy. Oh, yes, sir. This is just a service pantry. Oh, there's another door. It leads to the main room. Well, let's try it. Gee, plenty dark in here. Yeah. Here we are. Uh, here now is the Mount of Capricornus, the seat of knowledge and wisdom. And Why are you rubbing so my head, Mr. Well Paladin? Well, that's part of the treatment, hey, boy. Sleep, hmm? dear, he he not got much light in this room, either, has he? No. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, boy. Hey, boy, don't. I can't help. What's that? Oh, uh, uh, excuse me, please. Uh, wrong door. Get out of here. This is a private parlor. Oh, so sorry, please. Let's go. Fast thinking, hey, boy. Oh, so sorry, Mr. Paladin. I had to sneeze. That's all right. No harm done. Now I know how he does it. Does what? Hypnotism. That's the answer. What is this uh, hypnotism? Remind me to show you someday, hey, boy. Right now, I've got to get myself a date for tonight. Look, Bob, here's why you can't balance these books. Put this little item over here, and you come out okay. You're right. Then what's wrong with you? I've had a nagging backache lately with sleepless nights. Makes me feel worn out. Then why not do something about it? But what? I'd try Doan's Pills. Good advice. That's Doan's Pills, an analgesic and mild diuretic to the kidneys. Nagging backache, also headache, dizziness, and muscular aches and pains, may come on with overexertion, emotional upsets, or everyday stress and strain. Doan's pain-relieving action is often the answer, and they also offer mild diuretic action through the kidneys. So if nagging backache is making you feel worn out, tired, and miserable with restless, sleepless nights, don't wait. Try Doan's pills, used successfully by millions for over 60 years. See if they don't bring you the same welcome relief. Get Doan's pills today. To save money, buy Doan's big economy size. <laughs> I waited around the lobby until Belle left the doctor's parlor. She was surprised when I told her that we shouldn't put off our visit any longer, that we should see each other that night. She agreed and promised to have a special dinner prepared. If I was wrong about Dr. Dreckel, it was going to be a pleasant way to find out, and if I was right, Belle was going to need help before the night was over. The first thing that happened when I arrived at her house made me feel I was right. Paladin, dear boy, I'm afraid you're in for a disappointment. Oh, well, how's that? Well, I promised you your favorite dinner, but I gave Harriet the night off, and, well, no pheasant soup oh, or all... Oh, no, that's all right. We'll uh, go out for dinner. Oh, I can't go out yet. What do you mean, yet? I don't know. Belle, why did you give the cook the night off? Well, well that... That's another thing I don't know. I, I did it impulsively on the spur of the moment, even though I knew you were coming. Paladin, do you think I'm losing my mind? Not permanently. The servant dismissed early in the evening. So far, Belle's behavior paralleled that of Mrs. Flacker. Furthermore, she would have been quite alone had I not stayed with her. It was close to 11.30 when Belle became visibly nervous. She paced up and down the room and at last turned to me. Paladin, I, I must ask you to leave. At 11.30? That's not like you, Belle. Nevertheless, you must go. Ah, uh, but I have no intention of leaving just yet. Very well, then. I have. What? Where will you go? I don't know. Out. I must. In this fog? It doesn't matter. I must go. Well, shall I come with you? I don't care what you do. I only know that I must get out of this house this instant. And without a word, she strode to the front door, opened it wide, and walked out into the fog, hatless and without a cloak. I left the door open as she had, for this perhaps was what she had been instructed to do, and secreted myself behind the portieres in the dimly lighted parlor. 
It couldn't have been more than five minutes before I heard a footfall on the doorstep. Instantly, the doctor from Vienna entered the room, carrying a small black satchel. He seemed to know what he was about. He crossed the room to the wall, where hung a dreary sepia copy of Rosa Bonheur's horse fair. He took this outrage off the wall, revealing behind it a sort of safe, which he readily opened, and within moments was filling his black case with the cash and securities it contained. As he turned to go, I stepped out from my hiding place and pointed my derringer at him. Don't be in such a hurry, doctor. The same. Sit down. Our hostess ought to be back soon. How soon, only you would know. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, don't you? Well, I'll tell you, doctor, just how much I know about your little swindle. Swindle? Swindle. You interest these susceptible females with the promise of reading the bumps on their head. Once they're in your office, you hypnotize them and learn as much as you can about how much money they have and where they keep it. Ridiculous. When you get a sucker that sounds promising, you give her a few post-hypnotic suggestions, such as dismissing the servants for the night and then taking a midnight walk alone. Uh. With the house completely empty and open, it's a cinch for you to walk in, take everything in sight, and walk out again. You are speaking nonsense. Oh, Belle, you back so soon, my dear? Oh, I don't know whatever came over me to rush out like that. Will you ever forgive me? Of course. Who's this? Don't you recognize him? Why, no. This, my dear, is your doctor from Vienna. Who? The man who is doing you so much good. The man who made you feel so well all over. Paladin, have you taken leave of your senses? I never saw this man before in my life. You see, Paladin, your impossible accusations have no proof. Oh, doctor, you are a sly one. The final post-hypnotic suggestion... You instruct your patient, your victim, that afterwards she will not even recognize you. Or remember that she has even consulted you. Doctor, I've got to hand it to you. And I'm sure the authorities will, too. Get the really light refreshment. (laughs) (laughs) This is where I talk, hey? Get the really light refreshment. That's Pepsi-Cola, of course. I just wanted to say be sociable, Charlie. Of course, Kay. Be sociable. Have a Pepsi on the road or at home. It always refreshes without filling. Charlie. Pick up extra cartons now. Pepsi is so delicious it goes fast. That's why you should keep plenty of Pepsi on hand. Oops. Maybe I'd better sing. Be sure to say keep Pepsi handy. Yes, Charlie. But the song says it sociably. Be sociable. Look smart. Keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair and debonair. Be sociable. Have a Pepsi. What Kay means is, get plenty of Pepsi next time you shop. Well, yes. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by William N. Robeson. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, Peggy Weber, and Shirley Mitchell. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel.